Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Follow me in 2023 and I will teach you how to become more self-sufficient. I will show you how to grow a homestead garden on a small scale and even a large scale. Today's video is about five garden crops to grow to prevent you from starving, so to speak. It's not gonna get that bad, but these are five wonderful crops that I recommend every gardener grow every year. Let's get out into the garden. I'll show you them and I'll talk about why they are so important. Becoming more self-sufficient really starts with, in my opinion, learning how to grow food, grow vegetables, etc. I have a book called The Modern Homestead Garden. It really focuses on learning how to grow food. These are potatoes. This is one of the uh, vegetable crops that I recommend. Potatoes store well. They give you a starch. They're just an all-around great vegetable to grow. Now, when I say, you know, with that we don't want to starve, I don't think an apocalypse is coming. I don't think that we are going to run out of food. But food prices can get high, and if you're really kind of focusing on becoming more self-sufficient, these are the five vegetables I recommend because they store well and they have other purposes. So, you can grow potatoes in root pouches. Check out my channel for different ways to grow them. This is one of my potato beds. These were planted back in March. There's 70 to 90 day potatoes. That means it takes about 90 days for them to mature. And I've actually just been harvesting them all year. Again, today's October 4th. By coming in here, looking around, and pulling out potatoes. They're starting, these are the purple Adirondacks. They are starting to regrow growth because they've been in for so long. But you can pull these out, store them, they stay in the ground and that was my experiment. So I planted these in March and I've been able to come out here and just use the ground, generally speaking, up to the beginning of September before they started growing all the greenery and I could just reach And you in. can see just the beautiful potatoes that you can harvest. They've been, again, sitting in here since they were mature probably, let's see, March, April, May, June, since about June. But you can harvest them store them indoors in a cool area, store them in a root cellar. So definitely grow potatoes. The second garden crop that I recommend are beans. These are cow peas. Even with that name, they are still beans. They are warm weather crops. So when the frost comes in, these are going to get killed off. But beans give you a great vegetable to eat over the summer when it's warm. These are cow peas and it's October 4th again. I just want to keep the date in place. I'm in Maryland zone seven, by the way. It's still producing beautiful green beans or cow peas that I can eat. And you can just cook them just like green beans. You can eat them raw, you can saute them, you can boil them with potatoes. Potatoes and beans go together. Potatoes are going to give you the starch. Beans are going to give you the protein. After the beans have been growing, they kind of move from, you know, this size to this size. They look like this. And then finally, the pods dry when they're super crisp and you can just kind of crinkle the pot away, the beans are dry. You leave them on the plant and then about now you can start harvesting dried beans. You can store them all winter, you can cook with them, you're going to get your protein from the beans. And that's a nice combination of having a starch and potatoes and protein and beans. So cow peas I recommend, they are really disease and insect resistant here in Maryland Zone 7 and you can just see Lots of beans coming that I can eat now, and then I'm starting to let them dry so that I can harvest them for the winter. Let's go over to the green beans. You can really grow any bean that you like. And green beans, typically you don't dry them, but they work perfectly fine. I've done that, I've cooked with them, I've made soup out of them. And these are different stages of the green beans. These are some of the first ones. And it's been raining for four days, so I wouldn't harvest these now because they're too wet. Leave them on the plant. You leave them just like this. The beans inside the pot are perfectly fine. After you get three solid days of sun, no rain, you can go ahead and harvest your beans. So beans, number two. This is what remains of my butternut squash. Butternut squash is a winter squash. Winter squash are really designed to store well. You grow them all the way into September, October. You harvest them. They would go into a root cellar. They can even stay in your kitchen. Most of us don't have root cellars. But they keep for months. And unlike squash and zucchini, which are, which are summer squash, they're delicious, but they don't have a long shelf life like your winter squash. So I recommend butternut squash. These have been thrown down here. I've been eating these all throughout the summer. This came from two plants. The smaller butternut will probably be eaten first. The mature ones like this 
like this has a blemish on here, you would eat that pretty much next. But the ones that are nicely intact can stay stored for several months. This is a great way to have food. Now you have potatoes, you have beans, and you have winter squash to really get you through the winter. And of course you can eat all the stuff during the summer. The fourth crop that I recommend growing is kale. Years ago, you saw on TV and in different articles that kale was the new superfood. It has everything you want nutrition-wise. That's true, but us gardeners have known it's been a superfood for centuries. It's a wonderful green. It grows through spring, summer, fall, into winter here in Maryland Zone 7. It can take a frost. It's just absolutely wonderful. And this is my second round of kale. If you plant kale in the spring, it's good to grow. You can harvest it. You can eat it through the summer. It's going to look like this come the fall. It can overwinter here. Next year, it will be back in the spring. It's going to bloom and flower. You can eat that. But more importantly, you can store kale, you know, through the winter. You do need a freezer. You can't really, you know, pick the leaves and store them. Although, technically, I've made... Um, Kale chips, you can dry the leaves. But all you do is pick a bunch of kale, lightly saute it down, maybe boil it gently, put it into a Tupperware container when it's soft, freeze it into a block or put it into a Ziploc bag. You can then just defrost it, you know, add onions to it, add potatoes to it, add beans to it, make soups out of it. You can use it in so many ways. But you're going to be able to store your kale through the heavier winter by freezing it down. Absolutely recommend kale. The fifth group of garden crops I recommend are root crops, specifically turnips or beets, or you could do both. Now, again, if you want to become more self-sufficient, these five groups of vegetables, garden crops, will really allow you to have food throughout spring, summer, fall, and winter in some capacity. And it just depends on how much you grow. So turnips grow really quickly. These are purple top turnips. That's the variety that I recommend. These were put in I don't know, maybe four or five, six weeks ago. They are just starting to get large. They haven't formed the turnip yet. I'll show you an example of that. But you could pick the leaves. You can store them the same way that I talked about kale. So you, they're little, you know, they have tiny spines on them, sort of like radishes. But if you saute them down, these are definitely edible. They're also going to form beautiful, big turnips that can be stored in a root cellar or, you know, in a cool place in your house. So these really provide you the greens, also provide you the root crop in the purple top turnip itself. And that's really important. Chop them up, freeze them, you're gonna have greens. Let's take a look at the beets and some more mature turnips. If you'd like to subscribe for 2023, I'll show you how to become more self-sufficient and I'll show you how to grow everything here. All these crops, I already have videos on if you wanna check out how to plant and grow them, but I will be revisiting them in 2023. Here are beets. Now these are beets that I planted back in probably May. And I left them in there, I harvested a lot. But they're growing beautiful greens. You can harvest these. And you can see you can see some of the beets down here. They're not really large into size. I'm really growing this area for the leafy greens. And you can see that in the fall, they're just sprouting up beautiful greens. Sometimes they get diseases on them, that's fine, just get rid of those. But you can harvest these leaves and then again, store them the same way that we talked about the kale and the turnip greens. So beets, definitely take the greens. And then in some cases, I think there's a larger one back here. I mean, look at the beets down in there. Those are the beets that I would just keep, store them in a cool place and I would have beets. You can also freeze these. If you have a bigger freezer, you can freeze whatever you want. But some of the idea is how can you kind of have food through the winter but not necessarily have to refrigerate and process it all. Dried beans are wonderful, for example. All right, we have some purple tops over here. These are super hot peppers, by the way. I can show you how to grow those too. Some more beets starting down right in there. And then I have them planted for a next round. They can take a frost too. All right, let me get into here. The purple top turnips here are about four weeks older than the ones I showed you. And you can see just the turnips are forming. Absolutely beautiful. They're going to double in size. Now these got a little beat up because the Mexican sunflowers right here fell over top of them and I didn't catch it for a couple of days. Turnips, kale, green beans, beans, winter squash, potatoes 
are the five crops that I recommend to really give you some confidence that you're not going to run out of food if that's something you're worried about. But it's a great way to supplement food that you buy at a grocery store and it will help you really become more self-sufficient. More beets down there, some more planted right over there, and in the background you can see carrots too. Carrots are a root crop. I don't necessarily recommend them as the top five because they're kind of inexpensive to buy but beets and turnips are just wonderful root crops for the greens and for the root that you can store. All right let's take a walk back to where we started. These are radishes. Radishes mature in like 25 to 30 days. You can actually grow them just for the greens and you could store those as we talked about. Here's some broccoli. You can actually cut the leaves store the leaves like we talked about and you get a nice head of broccoli which is a little bit harder to store. The five crops that I gave you are the five that I recommend for really covering all the bases. They grow pretty quickly. You do have to do some planting in the summer for like potatoes and beans. But they really give you a starch, a protein, vitamins, all kinds of nutrition, easy to store. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe. I will show you how to grow everything that we just talked about and I will teach you how to have a homestead vegetable garden. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Follow me in 2023 and I will show you how to become more self-sufficient and how to grow a homestead vegetable garden on a small scale or even on a large scale. Today is all about five crops to grow to really prevent in worst case starvation but really to keep you fed. Those crops are potatoes, beans, kale, winter squash, and root crops like beets or turnips. I'm gonna show you what I've pulled out of my garden and talk about why they're just wonderful crops to grow to really give you the food you need throughout the year.